Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Ingmar Weber, who is the Research Director for Social Computing for the Qatar Computing Research Institute for the Hamad bin Khalifa University in Doha. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Uh, now we're here at uh, WTIS 18, the World Telecommunication uh, ICT Indicator Symposium, and I wanted to start off by talking about numbers, a lot of numbers being banded about uh, here uh, this morning and I'm sure uh, as the meeting goes on, but why is it necessary to keep track of numbers in the ICT sector? After all, many countries are now uh, reaching saturation levels. Yeah, this is a good question and certainly there's a lot of emphasis on looking at things such as uh, internet penetration, which is a very important indicator. But in our own work, we try to look at a lot of uh, disaggregated uh, numbers. So for example, if you have a country with 80% internet penetration, it could theoretically mean that you have 100% of men, but only 60% of women uh, with internet access. So just disaggregating these numbers is an important uh, issue, which is not, not always uh, done. Another aspect that goes just beyond, uh, beyond just counting, looks at more qualitative issues, like how, for example, the internet is being used. Is it you know, being used just for entertainment? Is it being used for information? Is it you know, actually being used for economically useful activities, sort of, or so on? That's you know, something that's also harder to measure and where maybe new methodologies could potentially help. In terms of uh, non-traditional data sources, perhaps we could talk a little bit about those. How could they be used to monitor global ICT usage, and what, what in fact, what, what are they? That's also a good question. So in our own work, we use a lot of data from uh, social media. Uh, in particular, one data source we tap into are so-called advertising audience estimates. So for example, platforms such as Facebook, but also LinkedIn, and for Contacti and any uh, social media platform, they provide advertisers with information on how many of their users match certain targeting criteria. So you can go to uh, Facebook's advertising platform and you can ask, hey, I would like to show an advertising campaign to women in Geneva who use the iPhone X on a 4G connection. Right? And then before you launch your advertising campaign, Facebook pr provide you with information on how many people match this criteria. Now, if you do this globally, you can get a good sense of who's using this platform. For example, how many men or women are using, let's say, Facebook or LinkedIn in India or in other sort of countries. Um, and what we observe in our own work is that um, looking at, the, in particular, the gender ratios on these uh, platforms is actually a very good predictor for uh, modeling the gender ratios on the internet in general. So put very simply, you know, if you look at a country where you have far more men than women on social media, then typically there's also a country where you have far more men than women on the internet uh, in general. So here in Switzerland, unfortunately, a country where there's gender parity, but in many other countries of the world, that's, that's not the case. And what about the challenges of using these sources for data? Yeah, so when you uh, tap into social media in particular, like one of the biggest challenges relates to um, selection biases. I mean, of course, not everybody's on social media. I mean, I'm myself, I'm not on Facebook, for example. Um, and so then it's a question, well, um, you know, are you studying really society at large or are you just studying one particular platform? Now, um, um, in our own work, we sort of, we, we build statistical models to correct for these biases to ultimately hopefully enable us to uh, reason not just about users of a particular platform, but about all the, I mean, the whole population uh, in a country. And what's important to note there is that even the fact that, or in particular the fact that who's not on these platforms becomes part of the signal. So if, if, as I mentioned before, if we do observe that women are not on these platforms, then that is the signal, even though they are sort of ironically not part of the data set. Now, what about the fact that uh, over half the world's population are now connected to the internet? It was all over the news on uh, Friday. I just wanted to ask your opinion on that. I think it's 51% is the figure that's being quoted, but that's aggregated over the, the globe. W what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's obviously uh, exciting news and it's great to see, but um, you know, just as with, let's say, you know, income going up in some countries, is you have to look at the distribution of that, sort of, sort of you know, who's benefiting, who is online, who's not yet. Uh, online, right? So until uh, you know it's hundred percent, you know there's still fifty percent who is not uh, on the internet, and of course they're not equally distributed across you know geographies and genders and other uh, dimensions. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for the opportunity.